Hey guys, Bobby here from Wedding Cinema University. And if you're just starting out in the wedding video or photo world, you might be thinking to yourself, how am I gonna get that first paid wedding booking? Now the great news is you're not alone. Everybody has to go through this, whether you're just starting halfway through your career or are very well established. And so today I wanted to go over three great ways to get that first paid wedding book. Now everybody starts out differently, but a lot of people, myself included, book their first paid wedding from a family member or friends of a family or friend of a friend, something like that. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. But that's not perfect for everybody. You might not wanna shoot a family member's wedding. You might not wanna shoot a friend's wedding. You might wanna be a guest. You might be in a new area with your business, a new location, and you need to get those bookings coming in. There's plenty of different scenarios. And the great news is that this will work in all of them. It's not super specific to one situation and even more so, it's not just specific to just photo or video. In fact, this could be applied, tweaked of course, to a lot of different industries. So the first strategy that I'm gonna tell you is something that I usually tend to say not to do, but that is to give away a free shoot. So for weddings, I would say if you're doing photo, that would be a free photo engagement shoot. And for video, that would be a free love story video, engagement video, something like that. Pre-wedding is the key here because you want to eventually book that couple as well as their friends and family. Now, the great thing about this is that it is something that people want. Most people do an engagement photo session. Not as many people do an engagement video, but people love them. Um, so it's certainly sellable, right? It's, it's an easy thing to give away. And the other great thing is that, while I said I'm not usually a fan of doing free work or giving things away for free, you know, while it is work, it's not a ton of work. It's better than giving away a free wedding, and especially if this is gonna lead to a booked wedding, and in turn, sharing a wedding, having more content to share, et cetera, which should, you know, bring in even more bookings down the road. Now there's tons of ways to accomplish this free engagement. You could run it as a giveaway, you know, put it out on your website like that, put it on Facebook. You could even do Facebook ads, which I'm not super familiar with, but I know you can target very, very specifically to, you know, females or males or this age group or recently engaged, um, things of that nature. So you could run an ad with this free giveaway, collect email addresses, um, and then eventually pick somebody from there and do it. You could also just put it out there. Put it out there on your website that you're giving away a free engagement session to one lucky couple. Put it out on your Facebook, Instagram, social media, both personal and professional if you do have both. And just get the word out. People are interested, um, you know, whether or not they were looking at you beforehand to shoot their wedding. Everybody loves a free shoot and it doesn't really hurt anybody. The other thing, which is another uh, thing that I would say generally shy away from, especially down the road, but Craigslist is perfectly viable in this situation. Either look for people who are looking for a wedding videographer or photographer on the cheap, um, or you know, put an ad out there yourself. I guarantee you'll get some replies. You might have to fish through a few more through Craigslist, um, but you should be able to get something. Now, the second step in this free engagement uh, giveaway is to you know, figure out who you're gonna shoot, work out the details, find an awesome location, and kill the session. That is the biggest thing. This is a free shoot to them, but it's not a free shoot to you. This is your portfolio, this is your chance, this is your chance to get your name out, to have other people singing your praises about your work and working with you. So you gotta kill the session. You gotta get awesome photos, awesome video, put together an awesome product for them. And then the third and final step in this should come pretty easily if you've followed the other two, you killed the session, and that is get the booking. Try to sell the client, you know, make it a fun experience and when you give them their photos, if they love it, mention how you'd love to shoot their wedding. Now the great thing is you can share all those photos, even if they don't book you, hopefully they'll share some as well, and their friends on Facebook or Instagram or whatnot might see those photos, love them, love your style, and then contact you. So it really goes multiple ways in that ideally you're finding a couple that will ultimately book you for their wedding but uh, like many things in, the, in this industry it's kind of a spider web effect where it just grows the more people that share your work more people will see your work their friends family etc and that can lead to other bookings as well the second great tip to help you book your first paid wedding is a little bit different and that is to second shoot now 
I said it's different because it's more the long game, right? You're not uh, exactly getting that first booking right away necessarily, like you might with some of the other options, but you are getting so many benefits to second shooting. Um, the list goes on and on, but to name a few, you know, first of all, you're getting experience. Um, if that's something you don't have, then don't worry about booking your first wedding. Worry about second shooting. You're getting experience in real life scenarios. You're getting to shoot with your gear, maybe with the primary shooter's gear or the company. So you're getting a handle on what you like, what you don't like. It is invaluable experience. Um, something I did for a long time um, helped me out tremendously. I would highly recommend it. But beyond that, it can also lead to getting your first paid gig. Now, there's a few different ways to do this. One thing is, you know, you might be able to use, depending on your situation, the footage or the photos that you shoot for this other company in your portfolio or highlight reel or what have you. It might not always be something you can display publicly. It might not be something you can display at all. Definitely, you know, come to terms with your, uh, with the person who's hiring you. But I would even suggest, you know, if you are confident in your skills and you're really looking more for booking that first paid shoot rather than the experience, you know, maybe negotiate that. Lower your price to second shoot um, with the opportunity to use the images or the video or something in some way to help you get bookings. Um, but the other great things about second shooting are that you're getting paid. This is not usually a free thing. You should be getting paid something. You know, rates are different all over the world, but it's a great way to be getting paid and making some money in the photo industry if you aren't able to book your own stuff uh, at this point for photo or video, sorry. Um, and the other great thing is that this isn't something that you would do right off the bat, but you know whether you're second shooting video or photo, whichever avenue you're trying to go, make it known to the person hiring you that you would love if they have somebody you know who is under budget and just can't afford them, you would love to have them refer that out to you. Now the third and final tip to get that first paid wedding is a little outside of the box and that's encouraging you to think outside of weddings. The reality is that many people see photos and while it's great to have weddings in your portfolio, it is certainly possible to be booked from other kinds of shoots. So maybe you have an in to a brand or you know, a product or something like that, somewhere where you can get a lot of exposure, a restaurant, a local business, be willing to help them out, shoot a free session, shoot some products, shoot you know, some food for a restaurant. Um, you could even go further if you don't have a connection like that. Uh, you know, shoot a free family session, shoot um, a creative idea that you have, have a friend come model. These are great ways to you know, get more with your portfolio, get more experience, and then again, hopefully you're sharing these images and also hopefully that business, that family, that person, that friend is also sharing the images online, social media, et cetera, and that can help you, you know, build recognition, that can help other people get eyes on your work, and if they like your style, they might just hire you for what they have upcoming, which might be a wedding. Now, while that's not the ideal situation, it is pretty close to it, because if you think about it, you'd be getting booked off of your style. Somebody sees your work, they like your work, even if it's not specific to the wedding field, uh, and then they're booking you and ultimately then you're being booked because somebody likes your work and that is your ideal couple. Now there's a few things beyond these that I think are worth mentioning. They apply to all of them no matter which avenue you go. The first one I mentioned before is that you know for these people it might be a free shoot but for you it's not. You need to treat this as a professional. This is important to you and it's a great way to get going in the industry. So beyond that, you need to have the right gear. It's incredibly important, and that doesn't mean that you need to go drop $20,000 to have the full kit right off the bat. It is perfectly viable to rent. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that, but you need to make sure you have the right gear for the job, and beyond that, you need to know your gear. You know, no camera in the world, no lens in the world is gonna produce a good photo if the person using it doesn't know how. And if you do have to rent gear, I would highly, highly recommend renting it so that it comes a few days early or that you pick it up a few days before your shoot and shoot nonstop in those few days, getting the most out of that gear and getting to know it in and out. The next thing in this list of caveats is that you're a pro and you need to remember that and treat the session as such. Kind of building off of what I said before, but before you do any of this, you need to make sure you have 
things that make you a pro. That means you need to have pricing, you need to have packages figured out for that wedding, for that paid wedding, when you do present that to the client that you're shooting for. You don't wanna be caught off guard and you don't want it to seem like you don't know what you're doing. So make sure to have that laid out. The next thing you need to make sure to have is a contract. And you also need to use that for these shoots even if they're free, it doesn't matter. The contract protects both of you and makes sure you're both on the same page, both parties in the shoot. It also probably includes a model release, which is what you need to make sure that you can share the images online to help kind of expand that spider web like I talked about. And also it's just good practice. You wanna make sure you're getting a contract for everything, so why would you not do it, especially in a more practice situation? And the last thing that I'll mention is that when you do book that first paid shoot, if you don't feel like you're 100% comfortable in every situation, I would definitely recommend to hire a more experienced second shooter to help you out. Then of course, ultimately with any of these scenarios, you want that work to add to your portfolio. You want that work so you can add it to social media, promote yourself, and ideally have your clients, the people that you shot for, promote you as well. And once that happens, tons of eyes will get on your work. And if you're doing good work, that should get the ball rolling to get that first paid wedding and many other inquiries down the road. So I hope you liked that video and I hope it was helpful. If you had any questions or comments or any topics you want us to cover, I'd love for you to comment below. And as always, I'd love for you to hit that like button and subscribe, follow along as we produce more Wedding Cinema University videos to help you grow your craft and your business. Thanks.